Does zone two training fail your heart the most compared to other training intensities? And I think I found some data so that we can maybe answer this question. But before this, I got a great uh, follow up comment on my last video from one of you guys. I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to show you the data that I've uh, found. I haven't collected it myself, uh, but I was privy enough to uh, take part in a training camp a while back with an elite triathlete and uh, we were able to record all of his uh, metrics. Uh, and we're going to try and answer this question about uh, filling the heart and seeing if the low intensity is actually what uh, allows you to fill uh, the heart the most, get the biggest stroke volume and potentially get the best cardiac uh, improvement. But before Let's read that comment. Uh, I've heard most often from exercise physiologists that upper zone two is superior for eccentric hypertrophy and stroke volume because it allows for maximum heart chamber filling, which most stretches the chambers to hold more blood. They say that with higher heart rates, there is less time for the chambers to fill as much and the heart has to push against higher blood pressure, which promotes concentric hypertrophy and contractile strength. Uh, do you know the science behind the theory of zone two su being superior for heart size? by maximizing chamber filling. Maybe you can explain it in your 80-20 video since stroke volume is a key reason for the 80% of the zone two training. So I don't know if I agree with that last part that the 80% zone two training recommendation is typically uh, only linked to uh, heart size development, but I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. First, I'm gonna show you, show you the data that we have and uh, then we're gonna talk about the results and I'll tell you what I think uh, towards the end of this video. So what you're seeing here on the screen is some data, some stroke volume data and some heart rate data from uh, an elite triathlete that I was uh, lucky to see train and be tested here in this context. So the protocol that was used is the 515 step test, uh, which means he did five minutes of constant workload starting at 150 watts, then one minute passive rest, followed by the same five minute stage at 150, one minute passive rest, and then he went up uh, by 45 watts and you can see all the steps uh, and all the stages that were completed here and you can see the heart rate at the bottom i've also put as a reference a rough estimation of his threshold one and his threshold two uh, and if we think about zone two being uh, i guess for some just below threshold one for others just around uh, threshold one i think that's going to start giving us some uh, some answers to our question whether or not zone two is the best intensity for growing the heart so as you can see here and i, I unfortunately don't have all the detailed metrics of that graph but what we can clearly see and uh, what i have is one of the maximal values that we measured on this test which is 168 milliliters that's the stroke volume so that's how much blood was pumped uh, out of the heart in each beat that was measured with uh, a pretty expensive medical device that the athlete wore on uh, his chest many different sensors it took a while to calibrate to set up uh, but i was with some experts in the field and uh, so they they set it up and as you can see it seems like uh, the stroke volume keeps rising with the intensity and we seem to reach the maximal values in stroke volume towards the second threshold now the last two stages were not uh, the last stage i don't believe was uh, fully completed and uh, i believe in the conversation that followed this test the hypothesis regarding the drop in stroke volume towards the end was to do with uh, respiratory coordination more than with the actual uh, heart rate itself so meaning that the speed at which the athlete had to ventilate at that high intensity which he's not uh, used to because it's just not what his sport demands of him uh, plus it was already a pretty long test to begin with uh, that was the main hypothesis for why stroke volume dropped towards those higher heart rates and when i say higher uh, they were uh, around the 170 mark if my memory serves, which obviously would be lower than uh, the same test on the run. This test was performed on a bike. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Uh, but yeah, so what we can see here is that the maximal stroke volume was reached around threshold two. And if we were to look at the lower intensity, uh, it seems like we're a little bit below. By, by how much? Again, uh, unfortunately, at this point in time, I don't have all the detailed uh, data on this graph, uh, but it seems to be a little bit less, at least a little bit less. Uh, definitely the, the lower stages, 150, 195 watts, seem to be quite, quite low 
compared to that maximal value. Uh, and all the other intensities well, seem to elicit uh, close to that maximal stroke volume uh, of 168 milliliters that we saw towards threshold two. So to answer directly the question of whether low intensity is where the heart is being filled the most, and this is why uh, low intensity is so beneficial, um, I don't think that's correct. At least we can't say that it's only at low intensity because at least based on this graph, it seems like stroke volume keeps going up. And even if stroke volume does drop uh, at high intensity, whether it was because of uh, the breathing mechanics or because of the intensity uh, itself and the high heart rates, uh, at least we know based on that one athlete against a sample of one. So to what extent we can extrapolate that to all of us, that's a different story. And we're definitely not all built like this guy, uh, but we know that uh, the, the maximum heart filling is going to happen, let's say between zone two and zone four. Uh, it seems to be pretty, pretty straightforward from that standpoint. Now, going back to the conversation of, uh, again, whether it's really that low intensity that allows for maximum heart filling. Well, it seems like it gets pretty close, right? So you're going to get close to maximal stroke volume, uh, even at low intensity. Uh, but I think the, again, the, the bigger conversation, and that's something I touched on in one of my previous videos on uh, VO2 max studies, uh, in my opinion, what sticks out here is that, uh, well, sure, you can build your stroke volume at medium or low intensity, uh, but obviously that medium intensity is going to cost you a lot more uh, energetically and you, you're not going to be able to do it every single day, whereas the low intensity you can do uh, whenever you want. Uh, and you can do as long as you can eat enough to support the training uh, if, if we push it to the limit. Uh, so I, I don't think we can say that low intensity is the best for uh, filling up the heart. But what we can say uh, most likely is that low intensity is the best to fill up the heart and spend the most time there because we know that time is going to be one of the biggest drivers of adaptation right and by spending more time at low intensity with that near to maximal stroke volume well that's probably what's going to help uh, driving that stroke volume up over time by growing the heart that eccentric hypertrophy that we talked about uh, this is likely what's going to happen uh, but it's really a factor of time right it's not just a matter of doing a couple sessions and having a bigger heart it's going to take months it's going to take years and this is why we see uh, the best uh, endurance athletes have many, many years of, of uh, sustained and regular training uh, behind them. And I think that is probably the message here is that if you want a bigger heart, you need to train, but you also need to train sustainably and you need to train for months and years if you want to get there. It's not just one magic training session, one magic intensity that's going to get you there. Uh, I hope I was able to provide some answers to that uh, great question. Uh, thanks so much for the follow up. Make sure you keep commenting. I'm really enjoying the exchanges uh, in the comments, reading you guys and trying to figure out the next video, the next topic and uh, how to answer uh, those questions. So keep them coming. I look forward to making some more videos. I'll see you in the next one.